How do you pray? Did you know that the way we pray tells a lot about who God is to us and how we relate with God? Sometimes we do not realize that we might be treating God like a video box that we can manipulate. In my younger years, ang tawag namin sa ganyan ay jukebox. You drop the right amount of money or coins into it and it would play a tune or a song for you. Or we might be treating God like that enchanted cave full of treasures but covered by a rock that opened to Alibaba only if he was able to say the right formula. I imagine Jesus saying with a bit of humor, when you pray, you should not do as Alibaba does with the enchanted cave. He thinks his prayer will be heard depending on the number of words that he says and how he combines them. Is it possible that what we sometimes call prayer might actually be an insult to the God we are praying to? In plain language, Jesus, as it were, is saying, when you pray, you let God be God. That's why he tells us to begin by understanding first and foremost who we are before the God we are praying to. Jesus insists that you are not a slave before a master or you are not an employee before your boss. Who are you to God? You are his beloved son or daughter. You are a child before your parent. He knows what you need even before you ask. Prayer is first of all about entering into a relationship with God. Sometimes we would rather pray to a God whom we can keep in a box or lock up in a closet. Someone who we think we can do as many favors only if we offer him enough flowers or votive candles or if we drop big amounts for him in the collection box. You don't mind making an effort to make the necessary offerings or sacrifices as long as he does not meddle with your life your business, or your relationships, and start to make demands on us. We are comfortable with a God whom we can visit inside temples and churches, but we're not comfortable about a God who visits us, or even a God who comes into our lives. When life on earth just seems too much, we think of heaven as a convenient escape. And we think of going to heaven as the ultimate reward. And yet, the prayer says God prefers not to wait until after we die to get us to experience heaven. He wants us to start heaven already on earth. He wants us to live life on earth as it is in heaven. And we try hard to enter the kingdom of God. But the prayer actually says, Thy kingdom come. We would rather have a God who is like a superman, who comes just in the nick of time, pagkailangan natin siya. Yung tinatawag ng mga Griego, Deus ex machina. But we're not comfortable with a God who becomes human like us, who suffers like us, who dies like us. And when we pray, we spend much time telling God 
what we want rather than asking what God wants of us. Pero sinasabi natin, Thy will be done. And yet maybe most of the time, what we mean is, My will be done. Finally, about food, forgiveness, and deliverance. We ask for food to fill up our hungry stomachs, but rarely ever ask for the food that we need to nourish our starving spirits. We often forget what the scripture says. It is not by bread alone that one lives, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. And so, He teaches us to seek the Word as our daily bread. At mukhang marami nang nasasanay ngayon to listen to God's Word and to seek it in all hunger as our food. And how can we be God's children if we do not learn forgiveness? Jesus reminds us never to forget the connection between being forgiven and being forgiving. Look, the prayer says, Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Gaya ng pagpapatawad namin sa nagkasala sa amin. Do you realize what you're saying when you pray that? Actually, it's as good as saying, do not forgive us if we ourselves cannot forgive others. Do we realize that we make it hard for God to forgive us when we ourselves are unable to forgive others. Why should we learn to forgive? Well, because our true enemies in this world are not fellow human beings. Like I keep saying in my homilies, we hate the sin but love the sinners. Nevertheless, because our true enemy in this world are not human beings, but the evil one, si Satanas. And we can only hope for deliverance from the evil one in the name of Jesus Christ, who has been given the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.